Yo, yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jimmy. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. This is going to be part three. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed part one and part two. If you haven't seen it yet, that's where I go over 2D drawings, drawing things in sketch mode, and then eventually turning that into 3D in part two. So in part three here, guys, I'm going to be going over some more 3D features with you guys. And then I promise, guys, for the next video, we're going to be designing something. Okay, so that video is going to be coming up next. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe because I have uh, exciting news. Um, so since I've been making the SolidWorks videos, I was reached out to by SolidWorks. They sponsored me to go ahead and attend their 3D experience world. Oh my goodness. So that's going to be really fun. I'm going to be headed to Tennessee next week, guys. I'm going to be vlogging my experience there and showing you guys around. So follow along with me. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right. So right here, uh, I'm checking out all my features so there's like swept and loft so I want to show you guys some of those features that are all going to be right here uh, we have this revolve base boss that it's going to be a good tool we're going to make be making like a donut so uh, that's going to be fun and then uh, I'm going to be showing you guys specifically the swept tool and then the lofted tool there's a lofted boss and swept boss and then I'll show you guys the fillet tool because the fillet tool you know just get used to that word. If you guys don't know what it is, it's essentially a rounded corner or a radius corner. We in the industrial design world, we call rounded corner fillets. All right, so uh, the first one I'm gonna show you guys here is this revolve. So let's go ahead and enter into sketch mode by clicking on the sketch tab and then hitting that sketch button. We're gonna go ahead and select our sketch plane. Let's go with the front plane and I'm gonna go ahead now and draw my circle. I love using circles just to show you guys any of these tools. Okay, so we'll click in the origin, click out again. Let's go ahead and dimension this thing. Let's dimension this thing one inch and then hit enter okay so uh i got this circle now it's one inch and now we have to select a vertical we have to draw a vertical line so let's go ahead and click our center line and this vertical line is going to be used to pretty much revolve around so you got to make sure to draw this vertical line as far as you want it to revolve around so i'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's perfectly vertical with that um relation then let's go ahead that looks pretty much good to me i can move it left and right if i want but actually i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that i dimension this um, as far as it needs to be so i could always move that left and right and the further i move it the bigger the donut is going to be if you guys can imagine that so i'm going to go ahead and use another center line just to like dial it down so i'm going to draw a line from the center origin to the uh, vertical line i'm going to go ahead and dimension that Let's go ahead, uh, let's see, how much do I actually want to do it? Let's go just with one inch. Okay, so let's go with one inch. So it's going to be a two inch diameter because it's going to revolve around that vertical line. Okay, so let's exit out of sketch mode, jump into our feature tab, and let's go ahead and select this revolve base boss. So it's going to ask me, what do I want? Uh, to revolve so I'm gonna go into my feature manager tree and select that sketch so it's asking me for the vertical line so in the left it's prompting me for the vertical line I go ahead and click the vertical line and you guys can have a better understanding of how this tool works you know you probably didn't, didn't quite understand it when I was telling you guys uh, when we were drawing our sketch but if we go ahead and exit out of sketch mode we can see that that circle drawing has revolved around that line so now you guys can kind of see the reason why we draw that vertical line and make sure that it is uh, for far away enough right but let's say I wanted to actually change it we can see that our uh, feature now our revolve is to the left in our feature manager tree and if we drop down that little arrow button we can go ahead and see our sketch so I'm actually gonna go ahead and edit it just to show you guys so let's go ahead and make it 1.5 inches and I'll go ahead and click on exit sketch and there we can see that our donut has now increased so it's very important to know how far away that vertical line is. Let's go ahead and jump into our edit boss and I'm going to show you guys this section right here. So right now we see that it's 365 degrees but if I can change it uh, to 180 we can see that now we have half of the donut. So uh, I guess somebody was hungry and they ate the other half. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into sketch mode. So I'm going to show you guys something else. So let's go ahead and select our top plane. 
And let's see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap normal two. Go ahead and click your circle sketch. That's my favorite one. All right, so go ahead and click and drag out. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of sketch mode. So let's go ahead, looks good. So guys, so far we've only used features that require one single sketch, but there are some features that require two sketches for you to use them. And so right now we have our circle sketch. If I take a look at the swept, we can see that it's asking us for two different sketches, the sketch profile and then the circular profile. So, so far we've made the sketch profile, but right now we need to do the circular one. So let's go ahead and enter back into sketch mode. And I'm gonna go ahead now and select the front plane. So the front plane is going right into that circle. So I know that it's going to touch that center of the circle. So let's go ahead and now select our spline tool and it's gonna be the first one guys. And so I'm gonna start off right in the center of that circle right there and then just click and then move out and click somewhere else. So let's see, where do I wanna put it? I wanna put it like right here and then Let's zoom out a little bit with the scroll wheel and then click again. So we can see now that I have this spline that's curving outwards like that. But so you see how it's gonna be jutting directly out, like it's just gonna start like with an angle immediately. So what I wanna actually do is have it go directly straight up first and then start bending over. So how I do that is let's go ahead and do normal two. And then let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. So using these arrows guys and the relations, I'm gonna go ahead and make this line here vertical. So I'm gonna click that end tip and then I'm gonna click on vertical. Guys, if this is unfamiliar to you, go ahead and watch part one and part two. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and exit out of sketch mode. So you guys probably don't quite know. I'm gonna actually go ahead and make this like this shape. So it's kind of like an S. You guys probably don't know what I'm doing right now, but as we jump into the swept tool, you guys are gonna understand immediately what we're doing. So let's go ahead and select our swept base boss. And now we'll drop down the feature manager tree and select the two sketches that we just did. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my profile and then my circular and boom there is the preview you guys can now finally understand what we've been building this whole time so you guys see it follows that uh, curve right there but we have a couple different options if you go ahead and select that option right there just click on the drop down menu we could switch this follow path here to a uh, constant and then we can see it just gives us a slightly different kind of shape so if you like the shape better then cool works for you go ahead and do that if you like this one better, uh, so it's just giving you kind of different options, all right? So down here, we have a couple more options. This is where you're gonna be able to find your merge results. Again, guys, if you don't know what that is, go ahead and watch part one and part two. That's a very important button right there. So let's go ahead and exit out. And there we have our swept shape. So we have the revolve shape and then the swept shape completed. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this lofted one too. So this lofted one's pretty cool. It's essentially using two different sketches again to create an object. So if we go ahead and select our sketch tab, go ahead and jump back into sketch mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the top plane. So let's see, uh, snap right to it with the normal two guys and click on, let's go ahead and create a square, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and select the center square, click out and then click again, booyah. Okay, so exit out of sketch mode. And again, guys, this is gonna be requiring two different sketches, remember that? So similar to our swept uh, that require two sketches, we're gonna to have to sketch another one. But for this one, guys, we're gonna to need to create a new plane. So I'm gonna show you guys how to sketch on a brand new plane that hasn't been the one wet we've sketched on before. So you guys are probably wondering, Jimmy, how the heck do we do that? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the top plane, all right? So turn it to this 45 degree angle just like this where everything is in a 45 degree angle. So this is gonna be a little bit tricky guys. What I want you to do is hold down the control button on your keyboard, make sure it's at this angle, okay? And then click on the corner of the plane and drag upwards 
while you're still holding down that control button. And you can see that now we have dragged out a new plane. So that new plane is offset from our top plane. So now we can draw on that plane. So we can actually adjust how far that plane is on the left right here. So right now it's a little over four inches. I'm gonna go ahead and make it about two inches away from that plane. Go ahead and click the green check mark. And so now we have our brand new plane and it's always gonna be hovering there. You guys can see in our feature manager tree that now we have a brand new plane. Let's begin using this plane now uh, to sketch on. So let's go ahead and enter back into sketch mode and go ahead and snap right to it. So we're gonna be sketching on that new plane that we just made. Go ahead and select your circle tool and I'm gonna snap right into the middle of that square. And then let's go ahead and click outwards, making it smaller than the square for now. I mean, you can make it bigger if you want, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of sketch mode and we can see that that circle sketch right now is hovering right over our square on the top plane. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the lofted tool. So it's right here, it's called lofted base boss. Let's go ahead and click it. And then it's gonna ask us to choose our profile. So it's gonna be the circle and the square sketch. So let's go ahead and select them. So we have our sketch right here and then go ahead and select that one right there and boom. Now you guys know what the lofted tool is all about. So you guys can see it transition from that square shape to that circle shape. So let's go ahead and exit out and we can now check out our lovely shape right there. So it's a little bit more of a unique shape. You guys can go ahead and experiment with other shapes. You could do a diamond or a triangle or something like that and connect them two together. Or you could do even like a, a bigger circle to a smaller circle. So that's pretty cool too. So we've built a lot of things but I'm actually gonna show you guys now how to actually cut away at it okay so let's go ahead and enter into sketch mode and I'm gonna go ahead and select that new plane that we created plane one okay so let's go ahead now and select our center square sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and snap to it and it's gonna be on the surface as the circle that you guys see. So it's on the same exact plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my square smaller than the circle looks pretty good and I'm gonna go ahead and exit now out of sketch mode so we can see that our square is drawn directly on that circle right there let's go ahead and enter back into sketch mode so boom sketch button it's gonna ask me which plane I'm actually gonna select this bottom plane right here so let's go ahead now and click on our circle sketch and snap directly straight on I'm gonna go ahead and snap right into that center circle drag it out boom you can make it any shape you want I just want to really show you guys what this thing really does okay so let's go ahead and cut a lofted shape out of our lofted shape so we can see now we have a square and our circle let's jump into the feature and right over here not to the left but to the right of it you guys see where it says cut lofted cut go ahead and select that and so it's going to ask us to select our circle and our square so i'm going to go ahead and drop down my feature manager tree and select both of those sketches boom and boom so you guys now see there is a preview showing that cut it so let's go ahead and exit out and now we have made a cut through our shape right there so if we look at the top we look at the bottom you guys can see how it did it there's that circle shape and then transition slowly into the square four so let's go ahead now and jump into this fillet button the fillet button is really fun if you go ahead and select the uh little triangle at the bottom there's a drop down menu it says fillet and chamfer so i'm going to show you guys the fillet first and then we'll go ahead and show you the chamfer so right here there's a couple different options but uh, the first one on the far left that's the default one so we have that one selected now and then I'm gonna go ahead and select this edge right here so we can see that it's highlighted in orange so if we go ahead and select it we can see now that it radiate radius it's hard to say radius the uh, corner right there so I could go ahead and change the size of that radius on the left right here so we can just be more precise and let's just say like half an inch. And as you guys can see there in the preview that it is pretty much almost a dome. So I'll, let's decrease it a little bit so it's not completely like a sausage. 
and that looks pretty good so I'm just gonna hit the check mark so you guys can just change it to whatever you want just to get that diameter dialed down exactly to the radius that you're looking for so I'm gonna show you guys uh, the fillet again let's go ahead and try to fill it this other part that we have so we select our fillet tool and then let's just click that edge and that edge we can see that they have now filleted and if we want to make this one a sausage like making it 0.5 like the other one we can see there about 0.4 there we can see that um, they're pretty rounded so it's like a curved sausage pretty funny okay so I'm gonna show you guys now this chanfer tool it lives right under the fillet tool and let's go ahead and chanfer this edge right here. So if you guys see that edge right here, uh, let's go ahead and select it. And then we could see that it has chanfered it in the yellow preview. In the left here, as usual, we can go ahead and change whatever we want. So I'm gonna reduce that chanfer down just a little bit. Nice clean chamfer right there. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you guys the mirror tool. Let's go ahead and do that. So with the mirror tool, uh, go ahead and select it and now it's asking us for which plane do we want to use to mirror so we can go ahead and select that front plane right there and then after we select that front plane it's going to ask us what do we want to mirror so uh, right here it's asking me for a feature to mirror but I actually want to mirror a body so two rows down you see right there go ahead and click on the arrow on the right and then we can now select which body we want to mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and mirror this sausage. And it's going to mirror over to the front plane. So uh, let's go ahead and click on the green check mark. And we can see that it's mirrored over onto the front plane. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys now uh, the mirroring on a different plane. So let's go ahead and mirror it. And let's actually go ahead and select the plane that we created. So this plane right here, go ahead and select that. And then now select the bodies that you want to mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and select these two sausages. And that looks pretty good. Boom. So you guys can see that it mirrored over onto the opposite side. So that's why selecting the proper plane is important. It needs to know which side you want to mirror it on, right? So this is great if you're designing anything like headphones. You can only you only need to design one side of the product and then you could actually mirror it if it's symmetrical. So mirroring is a great tool and I use that one quite often. All right guys, that is about it for this tutorial. We're going to actually jump into actually designing some Thing next all right guys I promised you guys so that's what's coming up it's gonna be a pair of headphones and it's actually gonna be kind of advanced so definitely follow along slowly with me I'm gonna be breaking it up in a couple of videos and again guys expect the next video to be a vlog I'm gonna be headed to Tennessee and experiencing solid world world experience I think that's what it's called but um, that's gonna be really exciting and I'm gonna be vlogging my experience there and taking you guys along with me so that'll be fun stick around for that if you haven't yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already also leave me a thumbs up letting me know that you learned something and that you appreciated this video and it'll definitely help me out with the YouTube algorithm as everybody says. And then also guys leave me a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.